dependency inversion principle. So what is it? Uh, High-level modules, uh, the module could be class in most cases. High-level class should not depend on low-level classes. In fact, they both should depend on abstractions. So let's talk about an example here. So let's say we have a concrete class A, and that is high-level class, uses a con cl concrete class B. So in this case, class A is a high-level uh, class, and the class B is a low-level. So in this case, the direction of dependency is from A to B. Okay. Uh, the problem is that when B changes, A needs to be changed as well at compile time. Okay. Now, by introducing an abstraction C, maybe Java interface in Java program, between A and B. So A is going to depend on, on the abstraction C, like a Java interface, and also uh, B, uh, the low-level class implementing uh, this abstraction C, meaning Java interface C. Uh, so the, uh, uh, the basically we introduce abstraction between A and B. Uh, by introducing this uh, the uh, uh, abstraction, the direction of the dependency changes. In this case, dependency, I mean the direction of the dependency from the B to C is uh, the direction of dependency is now from B to C, and that is what they call as a dependency inversion principle. Uh, so the key point is that you basically introduce an abstraction. Uh, between uh, caller and callee classes uh, through Java interface. And it decouples uh, code between these two classes. So what are the uh, tips that you want to use uh, for following dependency inversion principle? So all member, all member variables in a class must be interfaces when abstraction, abstract classes type. Classes must connect only three interface and abstraction. So one, when one class is using uh, another class, it should actually use through, it should actually uh, get connected through an interface or abstraction, abstract class. And no class should derive from concrete class. And no method should override an implemented method. And all variable instantiation requires implementation of creational patterns such as factory method or factory pattern or more elaborate use of the dependency injection framework so uh, basically you know when you are creating an object uh, basically uh, the uh, you want to use a factory pattern or dependency injection framework and these are pretty much applied in other principles as well right Okay, so let's talk about the uh, dependency inversion principle. So exercise five, uh, dependency inversion B4. Let's take a look at the B4 code. So in this case, we have a uh, shape drawer. You know, this is a class that wants to draw a shape, okay? Now, it's using concrete class called the circle. So if we need to use rectangle instead of circle, then we have to change this code. And that's not good. So we need to use an abstraction. Okay. okay, so what we need to do is we need to introduce what is called I shape, uh, the abstraction in this case, draw. Okay. Uh, basically, you know, shape draw is actually for drawing uh, the uh, drawing uh, a shape, right? And it's in this case, you're using concrete class called a circle. Uh, here, shape draw is using uh, this interface called I shape, okay, and uh, in order to draw, basically we are using that abstraction in this case interface of I shape, okay. So we could, and we don't have to change this code, right? So uh, here in the client, uh, basically we can uh, draw a circle, and we can draw a rectangle. And this shape drawer does not need to be changed because it's using abstraction. Okay, so in this case, the low-level classes of in this case high-level classes shape drawer and low-level classes like a rectangle and a circle. By using uh, abstraction of I shape, the uh, actually rectangle. I have to show this guy as well. So now rectangle implements I shape. So dependency direction is changed from this low-level class to this abstraction. So that's the inversion of the uh, dependency. 
Okay, and same thing with the circle. Okay, so uh, dependency direction is changed from this low level class to this abstraction. Okay, all right, so if you just run this code, it should actually work as expected. Again, if I want to introduce another class, like uh, let me just introduce triangle class, let's say triangle class, and the triangle class will just implement I shape. I'm going to just copy this code. And we need to implement a method, an implement method. In this case, uh, the, uh, the uh, draw should return uh, yeah, we should have a height and uh, height and width, right? So let's say uh, int height int uh, width. Okay, and we'll have a public class, the constructor class, public triangle, and uh, we are going to say this height. Right, and this with this, okay, and uh, then we are going to say uh, the uh, uh, height times with this, and we have to divide by two. And it should return, say, int. Okay. Okay, I shape is drawing. Oh, it's just draw. Okay, yeah. So it's not actually uh, it's not actually computer variable. Okay, so we should just say draw void, and we'll just say draw triangle. Okay, so we just create the uh, triangle, and if I want to, uh, you know, draw a triangle, uh, I don't have to change any other code, right? And in the you know, in, in 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 client code, obviously, we can actually get the, uh, uh, we can inject uh, the uh, new uh, triangle class right here, and uh, you know, we are basically changing this client code, but this client code does not need to be changed if you actually get the uh, the the type that you want to draw as a command line argument, right? Okay, so okay, so we are actually uh, drawing triangle. Okay, all right. So I'll give you five minutes to try this exercise. Basically, again, you are changing the before code to after code.